Robert Miller. And I'm Stuart Holmes. And we're preparing for Pentecost Sunday, and it's it's just a time of celebration in that promise of the Holy Spirit. So it's life and joy. And you can see our red streamer hanging down. We're preparing the sanctuary for that, that time of celebration. It's interesting, uh, Pentecost is a Greek word meaning 50 days, penta. And it, it's a translation from the Hebrew. And it was a, a Jewish celebration seven weeks after Passover. It was a harvest celebration. But it was also a celebra celebration of the receiving of the Torah from Moses up on the mountain receiving God's law. And so it was a time to celebrate that and a time to celebrate their ability to study and learn really God's law and God's ways of life. And so for the early disciples, that's what they were gathering for. They were gathering to celebrate the Torah or God's law and that's when the Holy Spirit came and moved among them in a powerful way. But that has made me think about our worship service. And every worship service is a little bit different. But in the Reformed tradition, what we do is we have a prayer of illumination, really praying for the Holy Spirit to reveal God's Word to us. And then we, we read our lesson. And in a normal worship service, we would have two to three lessons. But for our video service, we've been sticking to one lesson and so we have that prayer of illumination then the lesson and then we have the sermon so this the prayer is not for the sermon but really that the holy spirit will illumine the word of god not only for me who is preaching but for all those who are listening and that's what i love about the reformed tradition is i don't just come and preach about a text you actually hear the text yourself and that way the holy spirit can work and move in you and I might even have to say once in a while, you can even disagree with me. That's the beautiful part. You hear the word and you can say, yes, that's what I think it's saying. This is how God's moving me. And that's really the beautiful part of the Reformed tradition. God's word for us all to hear and to study and then engage in. And the sermon is just a part of that. And so as we think about and prepare for this Sunday, Think about that scripture, and our scripture passage is going to be Acts 2, 1 through 21. Read that before you um, watch the service, and then read along as I read that scripture passage, and allow God to move among you so you will know what God is trying to say to, uh, to all of us. And so those are my thoughts for the worship service. Now, Stuart? My thoughts. You talked about the Spirit, and uh, I've selected for the prelude Sunday morning, my spirit be joyful. I'm going to have two trumpets here with us to celebrate uh, this this Sunday's service. This is a piece I played it uh, as we started this thoughts on Thursday segment, and uh, it's a piece that I knew as a young teenager. I played it with my father in recital, my father and another trumpeter. So it has special meaning to me. But more important than that is, uh, in this time that we're seemingly struggling with uh, being quarantined and being safe, it seems to me we need a little pickup. And so that's why I decided to pull out the stops, mm -hmm. so to speak, and, and do My Spirit Be Joyful. Wonderful. That's what I started with. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about today was the hymns. Uh, we often think when you say the word hymn, you think, oh, holy, 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 or a mighty fortress, or uh, the church is one foundation. Uh, the two uh, hymns that we've selected uh, for Pentecost are uh, not quite so familiar to us, although we've played the first one a number of times over the past years, a wonderful tune with the words, Come, O Holy Spirit, dwell amongst us, come with Pentecostal power, give the church stronger vision, help us face each crucial hour. And that tune is uh, just wonderful. It's spirited and everything that you'd want, but it's not as familiar to us. <laughs> second tune is uh, likewise not very familiar to us, but the uh, 
text of the hymn is wonderful. Wind who makes all winds that blow, gusts that bend the saplings low, gales that heave the seas and waves, stirrings in the mids in the mines deep caves. The last verse, which um, is uh, verse number three: Holy Spirit, wind and flame, move within our mortal flame. And it goes on. They're perfect hymns for uh, this Pentecostal day. And uh, uh, we will welcome, in addition to the two trumpets, uh, Bob Willett, who will be singing for us. Wonderful. You might be thinking, in our tradition here at Old Prim's Reformed Church, Pentecost Sunday, we always wear red just to celebrate, because the, the, the color of red is in the liturgical sense is Pentecost and the, the Holy Spirit. And so you would wear, you know, the, a button-down uh, polo red or a red tie or a red scarf or a red hat if you're Claudia Raffi. And I'm encouraging everyone to continue that tradition even though we can't gather together. And so what we're asking is if you're going to wear red, take a picture of that and then post it on Facebook underneath the worship service for the, the weekend. That way, everyone in church can see you. It, it, it'll be similar to what we did with uh, Palm Sunday with our, our branches. It's just a way, uh, even though we're distant, we still can stay connected through technology. So I think it'll be fun. It's fun to wear red. I'm gonna have my bright red tie on. I don't know if I have a red hat, we'll see. But it'll be a wonderful day of celebration, and we encourage you to join us and to wear your red. Thanks, and have a great day. <laughs>